Well, welcome back everybody to the Super Duty build. Things are coming along really nicely with the panel. I did start to do just a tiny bit of wiring and really all I did was I connected the two red power wires to the EFA screens, to the breakers. And then of course I connected the two ground wires to the grounding block that I have mounted on the firewall. That was really quick and easy to do and it was something I could do without much thought. So I got that part done. All right, now this morning, I am going to get started wiring up some of the lights. Now, if you guys go all the way back to episode 14, that was my unboxing video where I got all of my lights from Aero LEDs. Today, I'm going to wire up the Aero LEDs Sun Beacon 2. Now, this is the red flashing beacon that goes on the bottom of the fuselage. Now, for us to get started wiring, we're going to need some proper tools like crimpers, wire strippers, and cutters. One thing I'll just note quickly here is these, the arrow LED lights do come with the, the male and female connectors plus the pins. Uh, but you'll notice like on this one, it's a four pin connector. There's four holes there. And with this particular light, the beacon, there's only three wires. Now there's no problem with using this. You're just gonna have an empty hole. But for me, I live uh, right, not right next to, but I live very close to an electronics store that happens to sell these exact same uh, connectors. So I just bought some that have three. They're exactly the same, it takes the exact same pins. And it's just since there's only three wires here, I'll just use a three pin connector on the beacon light. Now, one thing you may or may not wanna do is trim the length of the wires that are on the lights. You can see how much uh, wire actually comes on the lights. That's what I trimmed off here. I figured this was a good compromise between having enough wire there to be able to move it and work with it and not having it too long. Inside the airplane, this will connect to the shielded cable that's going to go all the way up to the instrument panel. Once you do have your wire cut to the length that you want, you'll need to strip it. And what I do is I put it in my stripping tool, maybe about 3 16 quarter of an inch and then you put it in there, squeeze the tool, and you have a perfectly stripped wire. Now the next thing we'd wanna do is take our pin, and this is going to go on here, and we're gonna crimp it on here. But there's a few things I wanna talk about on this pin before we do that. On the whiteboard here, I have drawn our pin from the side. And you'll notice it has two arms here and two here, these ones being longer, these ones being shorter. And you can see that on the pin. Now, these two longer arms are going to crimp on the insulation of the wire. These two shorter ones are going to crimp on the wire itself. Now, how far in do we put this wire? We don't wanna put this in too far because you don't want the wire coming up here and interfering with the pins that are gonna go in here from the, the other connector. So, you want this to come right about to here, maybe a 30 seconds of an inch past this. And I'm kind of making up that number, but just a little bit past these arms right here. Now, the other thing I want to mention is these pins are made for a variety of sizes of wire. And typically we're using 20 or 22 gauge wire. And what I've noticed is these arms here that are meant to go around the wire itself, the whole insulation, are a little too long. They're made for a little bit bigger gauge wire. So what I always like to do is I like to cut off about that much and get rid of that. So I cut these down just a little bit. And to do that, I use my regular wire cutting tool. And I don't know if my camera will be able to focus as I do this, but let me just show you what I do. I take it on there and I just cut off a little bit of the end on both of those arms. And all that does is that makes this a little bit shorter like that. And it makes for a nicer crimp around the smaller gauge wire. So on my beacon, I've already completed two of these. I've put pins on there. Now the red wire here, the first thing I will do is strip off a little bit of the end. There we go. I always like to give it just a little bit of a twist. Now, the next thing we need to talk about is this crimper. In my aircraft wiring tools video, I showed you two crimpers here that look pretty much identical, but they actually are very different. This one is made for home wiring, so we don't need that one. 
And this one is made for aircraft wiring. This is the one you want to use. Now on the whiteboard here, I have drawn the very end of this tool. And this is, this is where it's important to have the proper tool. And it's because of this little area right here. You'll notice that it kind of comes to a point here. And what that does is when you put your, your little metal connector in there like this, when you crimp this down, it bends these arms over like this. And that's what really gives it a good crimp on your wire is this right here. So you, this is why you use a proper aviation crimping tool and not something like this. Now I'm trying to stand behind a camera and do this. The first thing I do is I put the pin in the tool and the first crimp I'm doing is the smaller one here. It's in the back. So I will insert my red wire into here and I'm just making sure I don't go in too far. I'm stopping the red jacket where those two other two arms are. Once I get it positioned, I squeeze it and it puts a perfect crimp on there. Now, once that crimp's done, I'm gonna to go to the outer one here, which is just a little bit larger, and I'm gonna crimp down the one over the jacket. And there we go. Now we have a very nice crimp on there. There's no soldering required uh, and that's it. I've got three pins on here and I can put the connector on next. Now the next step would be to just insert these into the holes like this. And then we push that on there. However, keep in mind, if I put this on here now, I'm not going to be able to put this through the hole in the bottom of the airplane. So what I'll do is I'll leave this off just for now and I'll show you how this beacon mounts to the airplane. Now, before I put this in the airplane, I do wanna show you how bright this light actually is. And I am not exaggerating when I tell you that when I turn this on, I cannot look at the light, it's that bright. <laughs> I'm not sure how to look on the screen. It's probably just gonna wash out the camera, but here we go. That's pretty awesome. Yeah, it, it would hurt my eyes to even look at that. You really can't look at it when it's on. And that is what I love about the Aero LED lights. They are super bright. Now, let's put that on the airplane. Now, there are two different ways you can mount your light to the bottom of the airplane. You can drill two holes and just put screws from the inside into these threaded holes here, and that will hold your light to the bottom of the airplane or you can get this little mounting plate from Aero LED that's designed for their beacon. And what you do is you screw the plate to the bottom of the airplane, and then your light attaches to this plate. Now you will see why I didn't want to put that connector on here yet, because I made this hole in this bottom skin as small as I, I could. Now you could open up this hole and have enough room to fit the connector on there, but what I'm going to do is fish the wires up there like this, Put it on here and you'll notice it goes right on and you give it a turn just a few degrees and there's a set screw that goes right in here that holds it in place. What I like about this is if I ever, let's say I'm landing in the back country and a rock comes up and breaks my light or something like that, I don't have to get in the fuselage to change it. All I have to do is loosen up that set screw, give it a little twist like this and down it comes if I have to replace it. So. Here we go, quick and easy. Now, like I said, I'm not going to permanently attach this right now because this will come off again for painting. But now with this in here, I can get all the wires run inside the fuselage. Now you'll be using this process over and over again for all of the lights that you're going to put on your airplane. The way we crimped on the pins for the beacon is exactly the same as you would do for the nav and strobe lights the little sun tail light or the wigwag lights on the wings, whatever you're putting on, you're going to be crimping on a lot of these connectors. Well, you might be thinking crimping the pins and connectors onto the end of the wire is pretty simple, but now how do we know how to wire these lights? For that, let's go to the Aero LED website. The first thing you will do is go to aeroleds.com. We'll go on the top here to the documentation tab, manuals and diagrams, and we'll go over to navigation. And from there, we will scroll down to the Sun Beacon 2. Now you also notice they have all their other lights here too if you wanna get the wiring diagrams for those. So if we click on Download Manual, what we get 
is the manual for the beacon. And of course, you're going to want to read all of this. It's good, important information. But on the last page here, they have the wiring diagram. You'll see here's the beacon. They have the three wires coming out. Obviously, you know, the red is going to go to your switch and fuse and power. The black wire connects to the shield on the cable. And then at the other end of the shield will connect to the ground bus that I have on my firewall. Now, they also have a green wire, which lets you sync this light to other lights. So if you want to have this flash at the same time as, say, your strobe lights on the wings, you can connect it. You can connect all those together with a green wire. On my airplane, I do not want this synced to any other light. So the green wire on my installation will not be connected to anything. If you don't want yours synced, just you can either cut the wire off or just don't connect it to anything. If you want to sync it to your strobes, then here's how you do it. Well, the next step in the wiring process, now that we know how to wire it, would be to take our shielded cable and put the pins on here, work with this steel braid, and then we can run this through the fuselage. As you can see, I don't have enough here to go from the beacon to where it needs to go through the fuselage, so I need to order some more cable. So in a future video, I'll show you how to work with this shielded cable. It's not difficult to do. You just have to make sure you have the proper tools. All of the tools I'm using here are available from all of the aircraft supply places like Steinair, Aircraft Spruce, or some of the other places. I do recommend you get the proper tools. It makes the job so much easier. So until we continue on with new cable, we'll see you on the next video.